Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Furman Softball Weekly Windup. I am Dan Scott with Furman Head Coach Stacy Johnson Whitfield. Good to have you with us as we are very rapidly creeping down the home stretch of the regular season for uh, all spring sports, but mm-hmm. specifically talking about softball and uh, late night, early morning turnaround. But you're here and, and you're smiling, so that's something. I don't know if it's <laughs> if it's a uh, uh, a smile that's just completely out of because you're numb from not <laughs> not getting in bed until after midnight. But it's good to see you. It's, I always enjoy coming to talk to you, so it's it's not a bad morning start. Coming off of a three and two week, uh, in which you swept a doubleheader from Queens at home, and and then went to Samford and uh, lost a pair of one run games, but you're able to to have a nice rally uh, yeah. in the seventh inning in game three yesterday to salvage a game, and that had to make that that long bus ride a little bit better coming back. Definitely made it better. I think any 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 weekend right now that we can prove that we can beat any of the teams within the SoCon and at least come out with a win. Um, shows that when tournament time hits and it's down to one game to keep moving on to get to postseason, uh, gives you a little confidence that that it's possible. And, and had it not been for a little defensive laps, you would have taken two out of three yeah. uh, against the team that was picked number one in, in the league, right? Yeah, uh, we've been talking to our team. It's like the curse of the seventh inning right now mm-hmm. and just learning to close out the game and finish every play and uh, – you know, um, you know, we had it into the seventh inning, uh, two outs, and just a routine ground ball that just got away from somebody. And next thing you know, it's a tied ball game. We're going to nine innings. So that's just the name of the game. You got to close out every inning. We stress winning every inning one at a time. So, but but again, I think it shows some resiliency that after dropping a pair of one run games in the doubleheader on Saturday, you are able to bounce back a game that you're you're trailing going into your final at bat in the top of the seventh inning, mm-hmm. and you put together a rally and come away with a 6-4 win. Yeah, and I mean, that's what we stress too, is just putting pressure on the defense, which we did. Uh, they had some errors that inning, and then you know we had some uh, key hits at the right time to really push some runs across, and the energy of our dugout and the, just the energy of our team is something that I love. Uh, when it's on, it's just you feel unbeatable and that – the pressure doesn't get to them, and they just keep pounding through. And we definitely uh, came through that last inning and got some runs. Having a chance to, to see you uh, in, in the doubleheader against Queens in, in midweek that, that you won uh, both of those games, mm-hmm. you're one through five in, in your order. Mm-hmm. That, that's a pretty potent order for any pitching staff to try to go through. Oh, yeah. And I think as of right now, we still lead SOCON overall and within SOCON with batting average this year, which – uh, is a feed in itself, especially because within that top five, we have two freshmen, uh, which we're very excited about them. Uh, they have uh, Sylvia, I guess you could say, had like the game-winning hit yesterday. She, uh, with 3-2 count, two outs, a hit one to the wall, and we scored uh, to take the lead. You know, it's just a uh, very exciting beginning of the lineup because really there's only one senior uh, in the first five of our hitters right now. So, And, and when you've got... Riley Ludlam, Kylie Perry, and Sylvia Burroughs back to back to back in the order. That That's a lot of power, as, mm-hmm. as the numbers would point out. Yeah, and that's one of the things I love about this year, too, is Riley doesn't feel like she's always got to get the job done. So if she doesn't get it done, there's confidence that Kylie could get it done. If Kylie doesn't get it done, Sylvia, and, you know, it trickles down. But that's also uh, the great thing about having a little more depth in our lineup this year is – that they can kind of protect each other. You can't bypass Riley and want to go to Kylie, who's leading the league with 13 home runs. And if you happen to get by Kylie, Sylvia is, is a threat also, so you got to throw to her too. So it, it definitely helps us on our offense this year. Yeah, she homered twice in the second game yeah. uh, against Queens and, and yeah. back-to-back at bats and, and uh, just – an incredible presence to have as a freshman at that part of your batting order. Yeah, I mean... Well, I, actually, she and, and Kylie both. Yeah, I was going to say, both of them come in, and I love their composure at the plate. They are, you know, they have a really good eye. Um, I feel like they want to be in the box in those press, pressure situations. Um, and I know that Kylie, she popped up right before Sylvia came up yesterday, and she was beating herself up about it, but... Um, at the end of the day, it's a team sport, and 
She also believes that Sylvia could get it done, but I just love the fact that we have two freshmen who want to be in the box in those moments. And, and you played, obviously, at a, at a very, very high level and, and were very successful in your career. And, and we, we kind of touched on this a little bit last week. The only way to get comfortable in those situations is, is to go through them. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, like baseball. It's a sport of failure mm-hmm. that in the big leagues, if you hit – get three hits and 10 times at bat, you've got a chance to make the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. that's just the way the sport the sport goes. Yeah. The only way to get that experience and to feel comfortable is to go through it. So to say that they're not just comfortable but looking forward and want to be in those positions at freshmen, that's got to really bode well for the future. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're very excited um, about them and, and the impact they've already had this year. I don't think we ever expected – the impact to be like this, but I wouldn't take it away for anything. Yeah. Obviously, they've been a key to us this year. So, what is your biggest concern right now heading into your final regular season mm-hmm. series? So you close out uh, the, the the SoCon this weekend here at home against Chattanooga, and, and then you've got a bye week mm-hmm. while everybody else finishes up. Mm-hmm. So you're closing out your regular season this week. What's your biggest concern with this team right now? Um, I think any coach at Furman would probably say if you're playing at this time, it's the end of classes and finals. And I feel like uh, this time of year for any student athlete, especially a Furman student athlete, they are stressing about finishing up classes, about studying for their finals. And my point this week and the following week, we do have one midweek game Mm -hmm. left because we play UNC. We go to Chapel Hill Mm -hmm. um, next Wednesday, but um, is – I want softball to be their getaway. So I would like softball to be the place that once they get done studying and they do all that stuff, that they get to go to the softball field and just, you know, work and relax and let off some steam and then go back to study and be ready to um, be ready to take their finals and then also play some good ball. Yeah, because again, when you're in class, you can't do anything about softball. Mm-mm. And when you're on the softball field, you can't do anything about class. You have to be where you are. Yes, right? be where your feet are. Be yes. where your feet. Um, the league right now, coming down to the final two weeks of the regular season, one week for you, uh, it is the top three, UNCG, Sanford, and Furman, mm. are all within about a, what with one within one, one game, game of each of other. Each other. Basically, yeah. The Sanford's a half game behind UNCG, and you're a half game behind Sanford mm-hmm. or, or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, yeah, it's very tight. All SoCon is very tight this year, but yes, the three of us um, right now, Sanford or uh, UNCG has the only series they've lost has been to us, and so um, you're kind of hoping somebody else could take a series, uh, which would help things out, but. Um, we're all, it's a very tight race within the SOCON this year, which I think I stated before in one of the shows. It's, it could be anybody's game at any time, um, but but we only have one more weekend for us, and then mm-hmm. we're kind of watching that last weekend to see what happens. So, And, and what's interesting, and, and it, it gets back to the importance of being able to get that doubleheader in against UNCG mm-hmm. because you won both of those games, and – not having an equal amount of games, you go to winning percentage, mm-hmm. and, and that can either help you or hurt you. But because you won both of those games, potentially it could help you mm-hmm. in a tie-breaking standpoint coming down the stretch. Yes, yes, it, it could. I mean, right now I think our focus is more on uh, finishing out next weekend within that top three, getting a really good seed for tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's that's what our goal is right now. And as we were discussing before we went on the year, we know that the Southern Conference is a one-bid league, so Mm -hmm. the the tournament is obviously the thing that matters the most. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we always stress the girls' preseasons for learning. Of course, you want the wins. When we start SOCON, our goal is to win SOCON all the time. That was their goal they set in the beginning of the year. But at the end of the day, if that doesn't happen, tournament is most important, and you win tournament and you get postseason. A lot of people hearing you say that would – take a look if, if they follow the program and what it's been through and the circumstances you came in last year. Mm. They would say that setting the goal to be the Southern Conference regular season champions with this group at this moment in your tenure here would be an unreasonable goal. Obviously, mm. it's not been. Why would those people have been wrong? What is it about this team that you felt at the beginning of the year you had a chance to win a regular season championship? I think, uh, one, we had a lot of returning players, and I knew the strength of the new players that we were getting in. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, we didn't necessarily set that goal. 
as coaches, you know, when we were having our team meetings at the beginning of the fall, one of the first things that we said, or I said to them, I said, what, what's your team's goal this year? What is our goal for this year? And right away, everybody said, we want to be SOCON champions. And we kind of expected that. So we prepared uh, what we called championship numbers for mm-hmm. the season. And we compared them to last year's numbers. And we told them, okay, everybody's going to say, you know, you ask anybody, what do you want to do? I want to win championships. We wanted to make it realistic. So very early on, we said, okay, this is what it's going to take. These were championship numbers of the team that won SOCON or won the tournament last year, right? So we compared it. We said, you need this many less errors this year. You need to hit this much as a team. Our ERA has to be below this. These are the championship numbers. If we beat those numbers, we have a very good chance of actually winning the SOCON um, or winning the tournament or both. So I think when we set those goals early on and they they could see it on paper what it would actually take instead of just throwing out there, we want to be SOCON champions, I think it helped them realize it and see it better. Mm -hmm. And then as we started practicing and we started getting better and they saw the additions added in to the team that we had from last year – I think all of a sudden I've seen them write it in places. It was like, why not us? So I think that mentality made them really, you know, go through the preseason and our ups and downs. And it was a down for a little bit, but still see the light at the end of the tunnel when we hit SoCon to be like, well, we can do this. What do we have to lose this? We can do it. And, and I truly believe that that has helped us get through the season and let that goal be a little bit more grasping than, when you just throw out goals in the air and you don't really know what it will take to get there. So how are you compared to those numbers? Uh, I mean, we're hitting better. Our fielding percentage is better. Um, ERA, I think, is not necessarily uh, quite there in general for the staff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think almost we've improved at least in – four or five of those areas, Mm -hmm. which shows, I mean, with with where we're at right now in the SOCON, that those improvements have helped. And and there's one area that no statistical category, no advanced metrics can measure, and that's belief. Mm Mm-hmm. That is very true. I'm a big, I'm a big believer Mm -hmm. in the fact that if you mentally see it happening, like if you picture it and you can see what it takes and you know the work to put in, you're willing to put the work in, I mean, anything can happen. And I feel like this team sees that and it's just going to take a little bit of time to get there. This is the uh, Furman Softball Weekly Wind-Up with uh, head coach Stacy johnson Winfield. 3-2 and two last week, 20-26 and 26 overall, 8-6 and six in the SoCon. Uh, sitting in third place, but just a game out of first. What do we know about this Chattanooga team that's coming here this weekend? Um, Well, Chat's always a good team. I mean, he usually puts out a solid um, staff for pitchers, and uh, offensively, they're usually pretty good. Um, I think statistically within the league, their pitching staff has the lowest ERA. Um, But I feel as if... We play the defense. Um, they have some fast slappers that if we can keep them off the bases, if we keep hitting the ball, um, we could definitely come out with two wins this weekend. But I think I feel like that every weekend if we play our game. Right. So We might as well just come out with three, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll take three, too. <laughs> <laughs> Before we wrap it up, we're recording this on Monday morning, and, and it'll drop late Monday morning. Tomorrow, Tuesday, the 25th, is Den's Day. So for the people who will see this before or during Den's Day on Tuesday, um, it has become a big thing uh, on this campus. Uh, I think every college around the, the country now has this, this specific day that they do uh, a, a day to raise money for the athletic department. What does Den's Day mean to you? I know we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, what, what does it mean to the program? How can fans really impact your program by donating? Um, well, I mean, I feel like right now any, any donation, any help is help for us. Um, you know, um, overall it, it helps with, the from facilities to food, to uniforms, to just the experience that we want Furman softball to have or any student athlete to have. 
Um, so we would take any help as at all. But I know today we had our we had a meeting with our captains and they talked to the team. They come up with some challenges. Um, so there's one hour that's bombarded with a bunch of different challenges that they all came up with. So it's like the student athlete power hour of uh, some are dealing with. Uh, hot dogs they eat. Some are dealing with pies in the face. There, it should be a lot of fun. Um, so they'll be making videos and we'll be posting that um, today and tomorrow. But like I said before, we're just we just want people. We want to put firm and stop on the map. We want people to notice us, and I think that's important right now. And notice what we're trying to bring to this program, what the girls bring to this program and to the university. Um, I think that's the most important thing. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, obviously any donations help with every aspect of our game and uh, the atmosphere we're trying to create for them. You may be on one of these future shows before the season gets away. We can kind of share your long-term vision mm -hmm. for the program and, and some of the things that, that you'd like to see done from a facility standpoint and yeah. and, and, and things that, that it's going to take some time. It's going to take um, – a lot of a lot of work but we know that the Furman family is is capable it, it might be a good idea to kind of share some of that stuff yeah I mean some of that stuff even now I mean we obviously are looking to cover our stands and make stadium seating underneath I think that would bring a better atmosphere for behind the plate if you've ever been to a Furman softball game our outside of our fence is just a beautiful area people love sitting out there um and we love seeing the kids running around and playing softball and mm -hmm. run and just, it's just a great atmosphere. But I feel like if we could get some of those people in the stands comfortably where the sun's not beating on them and they have a more comfortable seat, you know, now that we have two cameras at our games, you would see the people there. And I think it, it brings the atmosphere to the team a little right. bit more, which would be really nice. Um, you know, we have, we updated our cages last year with some netting and turf but in order for that netting and turf to stay for a longer time and last longer, to get that batting cage covered would be fantastic. Um, but like I said, it's even as small as snacks between games and meals. All, all those donations help with all of that, which obviously helps us give them um, the experience that we want them to have and we're trying to get them to have every year. Well, so... There you go. There are some of the things that you can be thinking about, and, and hopefully when uh, Den's Day uh, drops tomorrow, mm -hmm. and it'll be going on all day on Tuesday, April 25th, you can um, you can donate to the softball program and uh, help them uh, start down the road to achieving some of those goals. The biggest goal right now is to uh, win some games, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a whole week of practice, and we're going to be prepared, and hopefully the rain stays away and we get to, to take some games from UTC. That would be great. I know you're tired, but it seems like you're having fun. <laughs> I'm always having fun. I mean, I love softball, obviously. I've never gotten away from it since I stopped playing. So, you know, and I love this team. So it's it makes it a pleasure to come. Go with your strength, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will take care of this week's uh, softball weekly wind-up with Stacey Johnson Whitfield. And, again, Den's Day coming up tomorrow, April the 25th. So uh, be prepared to make a donation to help this softball program. For Stacy and all of us at Furman, as always, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. <laughs>